Bites. Camera. Maction. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Million Dollar Media. I am your host, Max Keller Halls, and today with me I have. Um, Maya. And we're going to be talking about. The Obi Wan Kenobi series. Yes, we're going to be talking about. I think this is also our first Star Wars related thing on my show. I think we're going to have a good time talking about this because this is going to be a very interesting discussion because I have some thoughts. I definitely know Maya here has some thoughts, <laughs> knowing her. But how about we start off with like a, a basic plot synopsis of this series. This series takes place 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. We find our main character, Obi-Wan Kenobi. In his depression cave. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. He's kind of uh, going through... He's had a rough 10 years on, on Tatooine, watching over Luke, but kind of not watching over Luke. He's kind of like that creepy uncle at this borderline point. Borderline stalking the family? What? Pretty much. Well, not, no, it's not borderline. It he is. is stalking. Nah, because that one scene of him just with the, the binoculars. Just That's like... stalking. <laughs> okay, moving on. Stalking. And while this is all going down, throughout the galaxy, there's these people called Inquisitors who are basically Jedi hunters, who are trying to look for any remaining Jedi, which includes Obi-Wan Kenobi, especially one particular one named Reva. 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 It's Reva. I've heard it said multiple ways, but I've mostly heard it said Reva. I've heard, I thought in the show it was Reva. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Reva, who has a particular vendetta to just go after Kenobi specifically, for reasons we'll get into later. What she does to set our plot in motion is she decides oh I'm gonna do a taken plot and kidnap children and just so happens the one child in the galaxy she decides to kidnap is little Leia played by Vivian Lyra Blair and yeah Bail Organa Leia's adoptive father we'll get into the real daddy soon basically says help me Obi-Wan I need your help uh, I need you to get my daughter back I need you to be the Jedi that you once were and that is pretty much our plot throughout this season and a particular someone from his past kind of reemerges. We'll get into him and his particular conditions. Drama. <laughs> drama. Yeah, Tra drama. And trauma. So, how we start off here? That was basic plot synopsis. How we start off with some positives? Let's, uh, since I've been talking for a while, how about you start off with your positive and I'll start off with my positive. I like when it was set, just because you could get to see kind of what happened between... Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. I thought, in general, the storylines were really good. So what about, specifically about this time period did you like explored with this particular character? Um, I guess seeing how he changed from the Obi-Wan we see in Revenge of the Sith and how he changed from that to the one we meet in A New Hope. That's always been the case for right. like uh, Ewan McGregor, which mm -hmm. I'll just say this right off the top. I thought he was the best thing about this show, yeah. and I thought that he was putting so much more into this show mm -hmm. than most would, yeah. so I was like really happy yeah. for him to come back to this character after more than 10 years at this point. Yeah. yeah. Was it, when was it? 2005? When was the Sith film? 2003 or four. Yeah. So it it's takes... Been a, it's been... You usually awesome. like give it like a year before a movie like that gets released. Yeah. I thought he brought a lot back to this character that he mm -hmm. didn't get to explore in the prequels that right. he, I believe he really wanted to. So that was nice right. to see. And also, I'll say this. At first, I wasn't a big fan of another lone wolf and cub kind of story. Mm -hmm. Just because we've had that with the Mandalorian. Right. We've had that with other things like The Last of Us, Logan. Right. I was kind of sick of like this lone wolf and cub element yeah. just to have another one however it was really nice to see a little leia oh my god she who, was she did so well she really did and great casting because i could totally see her mm -hmm. growing up into right carrie fisher which is always sad to like think about like mm -hmm. and also what a tough role for a little girl yeah. to have to be in it's she killed it. i thought she was great she was really cool and i thought that those two acting wise they have some of my favorite scenes right Specifically, yeah. I think one of my favorite scenes that r really got to show what I wanted more out of this show mm -hmm. was the scene of them on that trailer back thing where they're just yeah. talking. Yeah. I found that to be like super, super interesting and like cool. Yeah, that's kind of the scenes I wish that there was a little <clears throat> bit more in the show. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to say about um, the little Leia? No, I think she did a great job in, 
in her role and she oh my god she's so funny <laughs> she has like great like comedic uh -huh. timing yeah great casting mm -hmm. also i'll say this because this is also going to be come back later with the one big problem i have but one thing i did enjoy was the director who they got for this uh yeah. deborah chow yeah i really liked her work and i thought mm -hmm. she brought a lot to the actors per se right there's just some things that i thought maybe could have been better but we'll talk about that right. later it's just more like a thing that right. i noticed that was kind of bugging me mm -hmm. from the rest for the for this whole show i was happy though that she was able to direct all six episodes that's true yeah so it wasn't i don't know there was some what, what it, like the, style, it's like a but... visual continuity right. in and style as well like mm -hmm. this is her project mm -hmm. and I think she was the first female director of a Star Wars project because she came from The Mandalorian and the higher-ups at Lucasfilm were like, oh, she, we like her. Right. Do you want to do this Obi-Wan show? And she was like, yes! Yeah, I would have jumped on that too. Uh, now that I... Yeah, I was... Yeah, so I was really excited. And I really like her episodes of The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. I thought she did so well. All right, but I think there's something that we both want to talk about that is probably the best part of this show. They bring back Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader. And... Anakin at some points. We're gonna. Oh, by the way, we're gonna be talking spoilers throughout this. The show has been out for a long time. It was really cool to see. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Hayden back in the role. I'm just salty they gave him like the hair and everything, and we don't even we can see it. The the Red Venge of the Sith, longer hair. It's a crime. Nah, they didn't do it or anybody like not shown. Like he had the whole outfit on, and then you just see him as like a little bathrobe. Like, it's a Jedi robe. Okay, but uh, look, he's like also, all bundled it, I, up, and he's like... It's meant to be mysterious. They got him all dressed up for what, then? For what? Okay, here, okay, you know what? I'll say this. Having uh, Hayden Christensen back, I feel like there were some other missed opportunities because of the limitations that of the suit, per se. Because he mm -hmm. is in the Darth Vader suit this time, and right. you could kind of see that he's bringing more... You could kind of see a difference... Mm -hmm. And that he's now the way Darth Vader carries himself in this show. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see like how Hayden, if he had more time to play Darth Vader, right. how he would have played it. So that was really cool to see, mm -hmm. especially when he's fighting Obi-Wan. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into that later. No, that there was just so many fun, like so many great Darth Vader moments yeah. in this. Like, uh, I think episode three has some of my favorite was one of my favorite That's, episodes. Oh, right, right, right. The okay. one where I'm... Uh, yeah, he gets a little uh, crisp. I mean, Obi-Wan gets a little crispy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong, but... Yes, he kind of gets burnt, and... Uh, like, it's just kebab. I love that scene. Yeah. Not because of what it is, but, like... But, like, Vader the, was such a, The poetry the, of it. Right. I was just like, oh, he... I could tell, he's like, even though salty under the mask, after ten years, even right? though he's in a mask, I knew he was smiling this underneath that. This dramatic thing. little pic. Like Anakin has always loved like the dra the oh drama, God, the flair. Yeah. Being the man. Yeah, he's kind of always been a bit of a a drama yeah. queen. Not just the women and the children. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and the children too. Uh yeah. Oh, speaking of children, I'll say this: this this show did come out at a weird time. Oh yeah. In the timing of it was. Especially oh, for the first episode, it was kind of like... Ooh. So, basically what we're talking about is, in Star Wars, there's a particular scene that's infamous because it involves the, the slaughter of children by one of our main characters. And in this show, they bring that back. But when the first couple episodes were being released, this was right after a, a really horrific school shooting. So, the timing wasn't all that well. So, I it did kind of leave like a bit of like a sour taste right. i think they did didn't they add in a warning at the beginning of episode one i think no not a not the first time so right, but now if you go on disney Plus, yeah they added it in, in in hindsight and also when they're releasing i believe like episode four or five mm -hmm. of this show right because uh, there's they, another there's another instance where you see it and like for, they actually show it because in there in the third movie it happened, but they don't show it. They right. cut off screen. Not in this show. <laughs> well, in Revenge of the Sith, they do have like bodies. I know, but like you don't That's see true. them. That, That's there's true. There's something different between seeing like and then just seeing it. I can just straight up like yeah. Like, it, like I was yeah. like, oh my god, they actually showed it. it yeah, was like, I was actually. I'm almost kind of surprised they got away with that. I am too. Part of me is just like, wow, they don't, they don't care. 
but like I don't know, just Disney, and they're just like <laughs> right, just the Mouse House, just being like, yeah, fuck them kids. Okay, I want to talk about the action of the show because okay, for context. We both have lightsabers, and we hit each other with them a lot. A.K.A. more, she hits me. Help me. What? <laughs> Ignore that last part. He didn't say anything. <laughs> but no, I want to talk to you about the choreography of this mm -hmm. show. Because for me, honestly, it's a bit hit and miss. Mm -hmm. Because I could tell that they really, really want to do the prequel style of fighting. Right. But they're kind of pigeon-held to... To what how Obi-Wan and Darth Vader fight in the originals. Right. And the original style of fighting. Right. So there's this weird dichotomy of, like, flair, but also mm -hmm. just baseball bat swinging. Right. But I do like, I do have, like, um, I was looking at back at some of, like, the fights especially between Vader and Obi-Wan, like, how there's there are, like, par parallels between the fight on, the last fight on Mustafar yeah. and, you know, what they're doing now. Mm-hmm. I know the show, especially in its finale, was had a huge bar to like try to like beat. Mm -hmm. I don't think it beat it because that fight with them on Mustafar is still like perfect, and you can't ever beat that. But right. I felt like for what this fight was trying to go for, and like, I just don't know, we lost any limbs. So, yeah. You know. Also, this that fight has another problem for me. In mm -hmm. like, I love how it ends, but it does create a huge gap in logic for me and I'm like, look, I know that you said that your friend is gone, but if your friend is gone, you would kill him. You would kill Vader in that moment and like save so many other people. <laughs> I don't know. I just Wait, so wait, the you're talking about the fight in the series. Yes. Okay. No no no, because wait. at the end of Revenge of the Sith right, right, right. he thought he killed him. Right. He was like, Yeah, he's like definitely dead. He's burning to death. He's burning to death. He's not getting up from that one except he did. No, I Speaking of which, when, like, he finds out, like, he's alive, that's that was my... was such a good scene. That was such a good reveal, because he's just, like, no way. <laughs> like... Man got traumatized all over again. I know, and that's gotta... that, And you can really tell the pain in his right, eyes okay. of just, like... He he does really good acting with, like, his eyes. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. And the little lip, lip cl yeah. quiver. Ewan McGregor's really good. And also, I think... Oh, I will say this, that I really like how they have James Earl Jones' voice in mm -hmm. this show, because he's always right. going to be Darth Vader. But I think they redubbed him. So basically they have him act right. and get his right. inflections through the voice. But he's older now, and his voice is kind of like right. raspy. You can hear it in Rogue One, especially like right. when he's talking. Like It's a different voice. Mm -hmm. So for the show, they're using <laughs> this new technology where... Is they take original audio clips, mm -hmm. put them into like a, an AI, and they type out something, yeah. and it will say it. That's in, wild. It's scary, because that's yeah. what they did with Luke in yeah. The Mandalorian, and Boba Fett, for that matter. Yeah. But that's what they're doing with Vader now, and yeah. since you can't, you have no lips yeah. to match, it's, it's so much easier to do. Yeah. And as long as the actor has given consent to do that, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Right. I think that's totally fair and okay because it's also a character. Right. And it's always going to be hard to find another voice for that character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, also, like, but for the scenes we do get of Hayden as Anakin, as Anakin, 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 Anakin. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I thought those were great. I appreciate the choice to have it be episode two Anakin. Yeah. Because that would have been during the time that their their relationship as brothers has not uh, come hasn't, downhill. Yeah, it's not breaking anything that would have been in like the Clone Wars TV show, mm -hmm. which is still canon. Yeah, because we haven't like explored that period between Episode One and Two. Right. So it was a nice. It was a nice little scene to have between those two. Right. That I thought was a great connection to what was going on in the present. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I loved how that was I, like yeah. put together. Oh my god. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> Do you have any more positives that you want to go into before we get into the negatives? Because I kind of want to debate you a little bit. Do not tempt me to just move on. Okay. So I'm going to get into negatives. I'm going to just say my biggest negative first. And this is just a me thing. I hated the sets in this. Yeah. Once you notice it, then you can't not yeah. notice it. Unfortunately. I think that the technology that they're using, the stagecraft technology, is awesome. And it's perfect. 
However, they're getting way too ambitious with it, and you can now really see its boundaries, because my thing is, for a show that is about this huge character, it feels so small. Right. And, like, the sets aren't... They don't mm -hmm. feel real. I feel like I'm on a soundstage most of the time when I'm watching the show, which is honestly kind of took me out of it for most of it, because it's mm -hmm. like... And also, I understand why the lightsabers are so bright. Right. But it, it also took me out, because everything is so lit different. They're right, having right, these right. bright, bright lightsabers. Right, I think they're just using like RGB sabers right mm -hmm. now, aren't they? And then they're going over and yeah, and fixing it, it up with yeah. CG. Yeah, I don't know. I just there's just a lot of like technical elements mm -hmm. that I just was like, this is bothering me, and I can't get into the show because of this. Right. Even though the story is actually really interesting, in some parts. Right. Do you have any agreements on like the stage thing? Because I, that's a very picky thing for me. Um, well, I definitely noticed it in a few scenes, and then I couldn't stop seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, but through my first watch, it, I didn't really notice it that much, and it didn't bother me. But like that's definitely like a thing that like if you notice it, you're like, oh god, it's just in the back of your mind. Yeah, now. I feel like the Mandalorian uses it Better. sparingly and well. Also, mm -hmm. I think because John Favreau, who kind of came up with that technology, right knows how to use it properly yeah so when other people are using it and also like I, the recent batman movie used mm -hmm. it sparingly for some moments and i thought okay i don't know i just wish that like they would have used more like real locations because when they used real locations mm -hmm. i got true. that feeling of like we are somewhere else right i felt like all the planets that we went to kind of felt samey tatooine is like always going to be, be tatooine yeah. The one planet that had, like, uh, the Hong Kong... Uh, Dayu? Dayu, yeah. I liked that one because it mm -hmm. just felt... That was fun. That was a fun one. But I can't tell you any of the other planets that they went to. Yeah. And there's, like, three <laughs> that, we, yeah. that we stopped by, and they all look the same to me. Mm. Yeah. It's a problem no, because, like, when you, when you have, like, a big epic fight, like, this is, like, this might be the end for these characters. I mean, no, it's not, but, like... Right. For the story's sake, it could be. Mm -hmm. And we're just fighting with a bunch of rocks around. Yeah. I mean, they do some cool things with those rocks, but I was like, it's not dynamic as, like, the Mustafar fight, where there's a lot of shit going right, on. Right, right. And you have to worry about the thing, yeah. the threat in front of you and around you. Yeah. Well, I, like you said, I don't think anything is going to really top that Mustafar fight. I know, but... I don't know. I'd rather them shoot at their shot than mm -hmm. just not even try to, like, come up with something interesting. Right. I don't know. That was just me, though. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, it's, it's like a lot of picky stuff. Mm -hmm. If there's, like, genuine story criticism. And also, I want to definitely clarify how I want to go about this. Right. Uh, this show also had a huge problem with the fan community. Oh, God, yeah. We're Star Wars fans, but we don't gatekeep and we don't condone racist actions, mm -hmm. especially to the actress who plays Reva Moses Ingram. On Million Dollar Media's Instagram, we had we did put out a statement saying we do not condone these actions. Right. Uh, we find it despicable. We are going to have... I do have criticisms with that character. It is not because of her race, gender, or anything else. It is purely from a story... And character perspective. Mm -hmm. I just was not a huge fan of that character. Mm -hmm. I thought she had a lot of potential. And honestly, she should have died. There's so many moments in the show where characters should have died. And they just are yeah, like, oh, like, I'm back. You have like, what, at least two people get like stabbed, stabbed in, in the, the chest. And they're like, and they just walk it off. Like, sis, walk that off. No, I, <sighs> yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I think that he should have just killed her at that point in. Yeah, it made it. no sense to me because, like, the whole point of the Inquisitors is to kill Force users. And you're just gonna let one go? <laughs> Knowing that she could quite literally escape? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just didn't make any sense to me. I like their fight because I just love... Even though she should have, like, just put the lightsaber up and just yeah, pressed the to button. Be, to be fair, you was probably like, oh, she was probably gonna die. But, like, if you were just aiming to kill her at that point, why not? Insure it. I know that sounds like really bad, but like, no, I no. don't use insure. She's I get what you're saying. Dead. It, you, we're talking about Vader here. Yeah. He kills like, people he, for fun. Right. <clears throat> Master Skywalker. Yeah. Anyway, no, but yeah, it doesn't really make 
It didn't make sense. To me, any it doesn't sense. make sense either way. Like, if he left her alive, like, he tried to kill her as a youngling. Mm-hmm. She walked that one off, I guess. She survived that. I don't know how. And but... then he had another chance, what, 10 something years later. Uh-huh. And he still doesn't. I, I don't know. Just... I don't get it because I'm like, what's the point in keeping her alive? Mm-hmm. Because the whole. Because. Okay, this is going to get really nerdy. The whole point of Vader is he's a secret in the Empire. Like, they, no one really knows it. They right. kind of and hear he, stories about this guy. Right, they don't know, like, yeah. even Obi-Wan says, he's like, how do yeah. you know that's who he is? Yeah, so when Darth Vader shows up, you're like, who's that guy? And then when he starts, lo- oh my god, he even kills, like, random people just to, like, draw out Obi-Wan at one point, which I did think that was a pretty, in a scary way, a pretty cool scene. Where he's just, like, dragging people out and, like... Dude, Dude, yeah. he just snapped a guy's neck! Yeah. No, that one scene on... Fucking... What planet? What, Plant, rock planet number one. I think it was Jabeem. Where he <laughs> just drags Obi-Wan, like, over, like, the coals or whatever. Uh-huh. Like, dude, that was... Yeah. It was so good. But I don't know. Like, I just don't get it. Because, like, from what we've been set up for Darth Vader in the show, he will get... He literally kills kill any... shits and giggles, man. Uh-huh. And just to have this thing, just for story-based reasons, that really took me out, and I was like, that makes no sense. Mm. And I think it would have been better for her character to die in that moment, mm-hmm. because it's a tra- yeah. it's another tragedy. All, pretty much every character that is a Sith mostly dies in tragedy. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't get why... I don't know. I thought, like, if that were to be her end, like, she... Yeah, because at that point we had known that she had been, you know, during Order 66. Mm-hmm. And then if she had, you know died trying to take Vader out, that would have made a lot more sense, I think. No, yeah, I totally get what you mean. Like, I don't know, just... I think my thing about the show is that I wish I loved it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because, like, this right. is the show that, out of everything that has come out of new Star Wars, this is the one thing most fans are like, please, do this. Now, most people, I think, definitely watch it because of Obi-Wan, because of Ewan McGregor. Mm-hmm. And I just... I don't know. I don't know because I know they're making they're making a series for Reva, right? I think supposedly it's rumored. It's rumored, and it's like if this was just a setup for her show, that it's like really this was supposed to be about Kenobi. I know, and I well, here's the sad but kind of interesting thing: someone took all episodes of Kenobi, yeah, cut out most of the Reva stuff, right, and just and kept the Obi Wan thing and just made it a movie. Yeah. And I was just like, I'd rather see that. And mm-hmm. it's not because of... I think Reva would have been an interesting character for, like... A, not, But not the foil, but, like, when you have, like, Darth Vader... Right. That's the... You just automatically... That makes the drama ten times more interesting mm-hmm. than this random character we just got introduced to. Right. Who was kind of retconned to be at the temple during that night. Mm-hmm. There's just a lot of things that, like, just didn't sit well with me. Uh, yeah, I just... No, I, yeah, she definitely had, like, a lot of potential, but I just didn't... Her storyline, or, like, the, her portion of the storyline, I should say, I felt dragged out and took away from a lot of what we... Especially, and I hate to say especially the last episode. Oh, yeah. It that... dragged me out of what was happening <laughs> yeah. with Obi-Wan and Vader so much. I was like, can we just get back to the fight, please? Like, there's like... all this drama going on, man. I know. We care more about this drama. And it felt so out of place for me. Because, like, I have one theory that they only did that just to give uh, Joel Edgerton, Owen, something more to do than just be like, Obi-Wan, fuck off. Yeah. But, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> because, like, otherwise that would have just been his right. role for the show. So right. they kind of gave him something to do. But it felt so, like, unneeded. Mm-hmm. It made Baru kind of cool, though. No, because when she just pulls out that shotgun out of nowhere, and she's like, hey, hold this, and he's like, what the fuck? I mean, like, as a fan, I'm like, okay, that's kind of interesting to know that, like, they just didn't die, like, without a fight. Right, (laughs) right. When you see their charred skeletons, you're like, oh, no, they put up a fight. That's why they're skeletons. Right. So that's the thing where I I find that pretty interesting, and Mm -hmm. (laughs) Luke doesn't care, (laughs) but whatever. I don't know, I just felt that to be really weird. But I did love how this show ended off mm-hmm. Vader and oh Obi-Wan's God. relationship leading that... into A New Hope yeah. with, like, so long Darth. Yeah, like, I, think you, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, goodbye Darth. Or just goodbye Darth, Yeah, yes. goodbye Darth. And that directly goes into uh, episode four where, where he, he only considers him as Darth. Yeah. And he, it does kind of 
put into perspective like why he doesn't tell Luke about this stuff. Yeah. Because he's like, no, your father is gone. That he's like, right. I'd I'd rather you have the good memories of him right. than anything. It's still kind of fucked up that he was like, hey, you take him on now. But like, <laughs> he's your problem yeah, now. Actually, like, <laughs> I'm gonna just vanish now. It's like I'm gonna head out. Uh, have fun. That was like a cool connection to the originals mm-hmm. that I thought was yeah. like earned and like that's yeah. the stuff that I thought was really cool about this show. But at a point, also the whole Leia subplot does kind of go nowhere for me at mm-hmm. least because at a point like the Darth Vader stuff takes over most of it and the right. I, I Reva think they, stuff. They that had me up until episode four, four five ish, and then well in six, he oh we all just like tells Hajj to take it back to Alderaan and then goes to this fight. I think okay. yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, where it's like, the whole point of, like, a lone wolf and cub story is that the adult figure stays right. with him to the end, but just but completely why, giving her away. I get why he did it, I like, did and too. I get why it had to happen for, like, story purposes. But it did kind of make that but whole... I was like, so you're just gonna just trust this random dude? I mean, not random, I mean, he was... Who has been known to lie. <laughs> right. He's like, you'll get her back to Otteron, right? Yeah, right? You're not gonna, like, ransom her or anything, right? It's the Anakin meme. Just like, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. that. Yeah, there's that, just some that, moments where I was I like... Was, I was surprised that he did that. I think they just should have stayed on that one planet. On? The planet that they they had her their base. Instead of taking a ship, flying off, getting chased. Oh, we want to take another thing over here. Wait, I mean, to be fair... Oh, okay, so if they stayed on whatever that... I don't even remember. That's no. the problem. <laughs> All I know is the meme, and then that's I only know that because that's where Obi Wan got toasted. Anyway. <laughs> okay, come Am on. Am I wrong? No, you're not. It's just. I mean, okay. So if if they had stayed on that one planet where they had their base, what? How do you see that have been taking out? Because Vader was like about to like catch him and like. Well, here's the thing, like, because the whole point of like that last fight was to prove that Vader is blinded by his hatred for Obi Wan. Right. And that he will completely disregard clear tactical advantages mm-hmm. just to have a one-on-one confrontation. Right. So I thought that's what we were going to do. And that, like, he's basically be like, you guys take go after them. I'm after Obi-Wan. Right. And, like, that's, stick yeah. with Obi-Wan. That, that is our target. That is mm-hmm. my target. I'm going after him. Yeah, that, yeah. And I felt just, like, doing this weird, like, now we're over here, and this is over there, and also without even knowing, I, it just the the spacing and setting. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the problem with the show I have. It's just like I feel like this just needed one more pass at a script. So wait, are you suggest like okay? So theoretically, it's, it's gone that way. Would they have stayed with Obi Wan, or would she have gone on the ship with the others? I think she would have stayed. I just stayed with Obi Wan. Uh huh. Because, like... But would he risk that, though? Because that was the whole thing that he, that Vader couldn't find out about his kids. Well, that can also add, like, a bit more tension to the mm-hmm. scene. Because now, like, not only does he have to fight Vader, he has to, like... He's like, hide this not kid. a out of mine, kid. Yeah. You know what it could also do? It could also, um, uh, really inform that feeling that, uh, she has when... Because in episode four, she does not care that Darth Vader is, like, tempting her. She's like, yeah, all right, don't you do what you can. He's like, uh-huh, try yeah, me. Try me. So the idea of, like, <laughs> yeah. if she saw him as a little girl and see Obi-Wan take care of him, she doesn't fear him like most gr- little right. girls would. Or most people, for that matter. She's probably like, God, this is, like, the hundredth time I've gotten kidnapped. I'm so over this shit. I know. It, it kind of. It yeah. got in, yeah. It's really that, yeah. She's like, again? God damn it. I've been doing this since I was 11. Right. I just felt like there were so many other ways you could have done it. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like we've covered most of my problems with the show. Mm-hmm. And that... And I think most of my problems is lined up with your problems, so... Well, uh... Do you have any more final... Do you have any final thoughts before we head out? No. No. I guess the one thing I thought about the show that they need to go forward is not to rely so much on that stagecraft technology and to also at the time of recording andor has just released its first three episodes which are really good by the way i haven't seen it yet you can recommend it later they're really good okay uh but from what i've been told is that they are like all the problems that we've had about 
Obi-Wan are kind of corrected in that show. Mm -hmm. So they do, it's a progression, and I also think with different creative teams you get different results. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that show. Mandalorian Season 3 looks awesome. Tales of the Jedi looks so really good. Yeah, that does look really good. I saw the trailer, I was like... Yeah. Seeing young Dooku, that's... Oh my god. And young Qui-Gon, for that matter. Yeah. And Yaddle! (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, like Dude, I'm. Yeah, that's gonna. I'm be excited fun. for both parts of that series. Yeah, yeah, both yeah, storylines. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see Ahsoka post, like, like directly after post season seven, like directly after that, and Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. Because have you seen that image where you yeah, see she's a per- at her, she's, she's, she's at, at her Padme's funeral? funeral. Oh. I was like, hey, Dave Filoni, you're you're an asshole. <laughs> nah, Dave Filoni can't go one series. I swear to God, without mentioning Order sixty six. I know. Also. The Ahsoka TV show. Yeah, no, I... I, I Do you know about certain characters that are going to be in that? I've heard rumors. Have you seen Rebels? Not yet. Watch Rebels before you see that, because yeah. you're, you that would really inform certain plot lines they may be going into in that show. Okay. Or I'll just read the synopsis. <laughs> no. I that think. too. <laughs> I'll watch it. But I, on top of, you know, all the other series I'm watching right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the future of Star Wars. I kind of want to see what their next movie's going to be at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they don't, like, pump, uh, I don't know, man. No, 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 I don't know. I'm not talking about, like, the episodic oh, right. stuff. Just, just... I just mean, like, what next their next film project is, because after right. seeing Thor, I'm not excited for that. We've all been... <laughs> I'm not excited for the Taika Waititi project anymore. Like, I'm really worried about oh, that Oh, right, thing. he's directing Invisible. He's directing... Like a completely original. Right, I actually okay, yeah. Now that you mentioned, I remember reading about that, and I was like, oh okay, and then. After seeing and Thor. And then Thor came out, and I was like. And uh, did you see Thor? No, but I've heard enough that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was really excited for the Patty Jenkins, Wonder Woman director. Uh, she was going to direct a Rogue Squadron movie. Ooh. So I was really looking that, forward to that, that because. Be fun. I, Rogue One's my favorite out of this new era of Star Wars. Right. So that's why I'm also really looking forward to Andor. But just seeing, like, Top Gun-style Star Wars movie, that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, thank you, uh, Maya, yep. for sharing your knowledge with us today. and Not going on the tangent? Not going on. You, you, you could have. I could have, but I, I spared you guys. I definitely spared I edit you. this. I know, but I, I definitely spared you right. at least. All right. Well, I'm Max Keller Halls. I've been your host for today. If you're listening to this on Wave Radio, please listen to more shows on Wave. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, thank you, and please help support the channel. And I bid you farewell.